let's come into our positions for meditation, whatever that is for you today. To bring awareness to the body. Just being aware and present to our physical experience in the moment right now and adjust your position however you want from if you come from floor study or doing something else whatever it is that just adjust your position so that you are comfortable but alert And we'll begin giving the mind its task of relaxing the body. As we begin to relax the mind, because when it gets an assignment, it quits worrying and fretting and planning and regretting and rerunning conversations. So we give it the work of relaxing the body so that the mind and the body both relax. So we bring our awareness to the feet, wherever they are in space, against the floor, tucked up underneath us, wherever the feet are, we're aware of them and grateful for them. We allow them to relax. Bringing an awareness of relaxation into the ankles. into the shins and the calves. Relaxing the lower leg on either side. And we bring awareness to the knees, just noticing any sensations in the knees. And we bring awareness to the thighs and all of the connective tissue, relaxing the large muscles of the legs, the hamstring all the way down the leg on each side, the IT band on each side. allowing both of the legs to completely relax. You bring awareness to where the legs meet the torso, at the hips. Relaxing the hips and the lower back, setting our intention of opening, widening the internal space, We've been sitting a lot, a lot of us. So we bring a different intention to this sitting. We relax the belly, releasing all holding. We relax the mid back, the rib cage, the diaphragm. bringing awareness to the organs, grateful that they are all doing what they're supposed to, all of them functioning well enough that we're sitting here together. Because we relax and set an intention of settling the mind 
and the emotions and the thinking. The organs get the message that energy is not needed for fight or flight or freezing. And so they can go about their repair work and digestion. Relax the upper back and the chest, setting intention of opening the chest. And in these days of COVID, I feel like I have a special awareness in these times of meditation, a special awareness of the breath entering and leaving the body effortlessly and how much we take that for granted. So bringing awareness to the lungs, grateful for how flexible and pliant they are as the nishima, the breath enters and leaves, nourishing the body and the nishama, the soul. The rabbis teach that we are breathed by the universe. And one practice in mindfulness practice is to just notice the space between one inhale and exhale. There's this tiny space between the inhale and the exhale. And one practice is to rest one's attention in that space. Opening the heart, softening the heart, noticing anything we're feeling. In these days of quarantine, there's often feelings that come one after another. Sometimes there's a confusion about what we're feeling. So right now we just allow feelings to be. Softening the heart, letting the heart know it's safe. Dropping the shoulders away from the ears, allowing the upper arms to be heavy. Releasing at the elbows, bringing awareness to the forearms. Noticing the wrists, relaxing the hands and the fingers. Often it's in the hands that we notice that we're sitting idle and still. What a blessing to be still. We relax the neck and throat. We release the jaw. Relaxing the mask of the face and the brow. We relax the scalp. 
and the ears, meaning we relax our attachment to sound. Letting the noises of the universe be what they are. Noticing how quiet things are. We open at the crown of the head. Increasing our awareness of the roof, the blessing of a roof over our head. And above the roof, the trees. Above the trees, the sky. As we come into this beautiful time of year. Grateful for sunshine and warmth. And air conditioning. And beyond our sky, the sun giving life to this planet. And beyond the sun and like the sun, all the stars and the deep of space. They tell me it's true, even though I can't wrap my head around the fact that there are billions of galaxies just like ours. How does one begin to hold the hugeness of that? Mano raha makom haza. How filled with awe. How awesome is this place? Each of us has our makom, our place. And how awesome to be given this body, to be given consciousness in these bodies, given the vastness of this world, of this universe, that we exist as a miracle and a gift And for some, this time of COVID has been a time to remember the gift. We take a moment to sit grounded in this makom, this place, connected to all life on this planet. The squirrels eating our vegetables and fruits. The life teeming under the surface where we can't even see it. connected through the coronavirus to all of humanity in a way we're seldom aware of. And aware that we are connected to the cosmos, the infinite. So we sit relaxed and alert, deeply rooted and reaching 
for the infinite, within and without. Our Parsha this week is Emor. And we are given the instruction that the priests and the offerings that the priest brings are to be unblemished. Rabbi Sheffagold writes that as I seek to fulfill my priestly function, I look at my life. I look at the physical universe that surrounds me. I look at nature. I look into the human predicament of every person that I meet and I cannot find something that is unblemished. The closer I look, the more imperfections I find. Everything and everyone is in process. We are all searching for balance in a world that is in flux. We are all flawed. This is the paradox of this Parsha. I and everything that I offer is likewise flawed, marked with the limitations of my particular perspective and prejudice. And yet, the truth of perfection permeates the atmosphere of my life like a tantalizing fragrance.
the paradox of this Parsha is that we are both perfect and imperfect at the same time. There are times when I look into this world or into the blemishes of my own character and I am shown the perfection of the whole, capital W. Not only do I see it, I experience that perfection as rightness and I am overcome by its heart shattering beauty. I celebrate perfection the perfection of the whole and let it inspire and empower me. We take a moment like Rabbi Gold to be aware of the perfection of the whole. Rabbi Mark Margolius reminds us that being called to live lives of holiness can be misinterpreted as creating an expectation of perfection only. Mindfulness practice helps us notice perfectionistic thoughts. So that when we encounter them, we can apply the midah of kavod, of honor. The midah of chesed, of love and kindness. And of anava, humility. We can notice harsh self-criticism arising or a sense of paralysis or procrastination arising out of perfectionism. And we can remember to apply chesed, to be compassionate towards ourselves. We can recall our innate, infinite worth as beings created but selam Elohim in the divine image. And we can do the same towards others. Each of us has within ourselves something clear and uncontaminated. A neshama tehora, a pure soul. We can always find kedusha, holiness, in that personal spiritual pilot light which never goes out. We are encouraged to see ourselves and each other as God might see us, not as blemished and unacceptable, but as stamped in the divine image and capable at any moment in any place of rising to holiness.
Where are we being called to be more gentle and loving and compassionate towards ourselves? or towards others right now. Within the perfection of this dance, the perfection of the whole, says Rabbi Shafagold, we learn and suffer, die and are reborn. Those blemishes that might have disqualified me from the priesthood actually become the doorways into my power as a priestess. It is only when I deny those blemishes or hide them from God that my offerings are rejected. When I enter through them, I can touch the perfection within all imperfection. Rabbi Yael Shai quotes Jack Kornfield in his book, After the Ecstasy, the Laundry, in saying that spiritual practice is not about trying to escape your life, but to face it exactly and completely. This is how we become not just spiritual people, but wise people. This is how we become people who are able to be holy every day, even in difficult times and times of struggle. We take a moment to sit facing our lives exactly and completely, understanding our own blemishes as a doorway into our power. Holding the imperfection even as we sit with the awareness of the perfection of the whole.
this Shabbat Emor. May we accept the spiritual challenge to acknowledge with eyes wide open our flaws and the harm we cause through them, the suffering, injustice, and cruelty that pervade our world. And at the same time, to see the absolute perfection of it all. Shabbat Shalom.